Okay, let us talk about vectors. And the first thing we need to say is that vectors have two important qualities. One is the magnitude, which we'll, we'll see how to quantify that, how to find it. And the other one is the direction, the direction. So a vector is commonly shown as an arrow and mathematically it uh, can be expressed as a letter with capital letter or lowercase letter but with an arrow above. So this means this is a vector. So far we don't know if this vector is in two dimensions when three dimensions and four dimensions and ten dimensions we talk about that in a minute but common vectors are electric field which we can see examples later a force field which we'll see plenty in this class velocity field which is usually uh, lowercase u magnetic fields of uppercase m etc okay so the first thing we need to know is if the vector exists in two or three directions, oh, dimensions. And that means that when you have your coordinate system, it's generally expressed in rectangular coordinates. Rectangular means Cartesian, basically X and Y are perpendicular. There's 90 degrees between X and Y. And this mathematically is expressed as R2 two dimensions in the real number system other fields other assignments or the classes will talk about imaginary numbers but not here imaginary numbers are very common in electric fields and in magnetic fields when you have alternative currents and alternating voltages but in this mechanic or st static field we talk about real numbers so from now on our numbers are going to be real and they can be negative and positive and you basically know that from zero you have a point where you grow in positive numbers and you can decay or or go smaller in negative numbers you can have whole numbers such as one ten 15 etc or you can have one say 5.2 etc so these are real numbers and the same thing you can have negative 3.1 you can have negative 0 0.5 all those are real numbers okay so that's why later when we talk about components of a vector or components in vectorial terms we're going to talk about i j and k so this is just an introduction to what we're going to see later on i j k are directions i is direction x j is direction y and k is direction z okay so i is direction x j is direction y k is direction z and that is important because each arrow can exist in two or three dimensions and many arrows dictate a vector field so all these things could be forces could be forces uh, uh, from uh, uh, an explosion like a shock uh, say like a wave a shock wave that they have multiple fronts of like the wave goes towards a building or wind has a lot of force so there are basically many arrows trying to push things down and they exist in this case in three dimensions now so if we have only two dimensions x and y they exist in two dimensions obviously but in three dimensions we, they exist in three dimensions so how do you characterize the vector the first thing is let's start with two dimensions Say we have a vector F, capital F. 
So it's going to have a component in X, and it's going to have a component in Y. So let's say that this vector is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Goes from 0 to 3, comma, 2. So you can see that you already saw this before. Just in a Cartesian or a rectangular coordinate system, you can have a representation of a vector by coordinates. 3, comma, 2. So this is in the x direction, and this is in the y direction. Just like that, you cannot combine them because they're in different dimensions. One is in x direction, one is in y direction. Okay? In this case, we can have a three-dimensional vector, such as, let's say, lives at a new vector, let's say red. So x is 1, 2, 3, y is 1, 2, z is 1, 2. So here and here, and then we have to have a meeting point like so. Okay, so from here to here, that vector which is going in x and y and z is pointing towards the middle of the of the coordinate system. This exists in three dimensions. So it has components, um, you said 3i, 2j, and 2k. Okay, this vector, only one force, only one vector was characterized with a coordinate system in three dimensions where 0, 0 could be located anywhere. 0, 0 could be downtown San Antonio. 0, 0 could be the moon. It's really depending on the system that you're wanting to study. And typically, you have many hundreds and thousands of vectors. But for now, we're going to start with one. All right, so this is the vector. And it's very simple because we start from 0. So we have a direction, which is 3 units in x, 2 units in y, 2 units in z. But we also have to find the magnitude. And the magnitude is very simple. Is something you've done before. Is the square root of each element. I don't like that color that much. So the square root of each element. 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared and this one is square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared okay square root of 9 plus 4 so square root of uh, 13 and this is square root of 9 plus 4 plus 4. Okay. So that is square root of 13, 17. All right. So you just use a calculator, do all those terms, and that is the magnitude of the force. So for example, let's say we have one more vector and lives in three dimensions, x, y, z, and it has units of three, four, and five. Three, four, five. So it's a vector coming up here. So it's going to be, that was F1, 
second vector equals, which could have been there, but just to make it simple, is the same coordinate system. So there's a second vector with coordinates 3, 4, 5. And notice that you don't put x, y, and z because x, x is the variable. Y is the variable. Is x could be any number. I, j, and k are the direction directions. The i equals one, x, j equals one, y, k equals one, z. So this is just like multiplying times one. Okay, so the magnitude, which is also expressed with two vertical bars, this is called the norm also. The magnitude is square root of three squared, nine, plus square root of four, 16, and square root of five, 25. Okay, so you can just go ahead and do all that in your calculator. Let's see, we have a calculator here. Okay, so let's do nine plus sixteen plus twenty five equals fifty, and square root of fifty equals seven point oh seven. All right, good. Square root of seventeen. Four point two, four point one two, and um, yeah, the four the square root of thirteen, is three point six. So that vector has a magnitude of three point six and direction of this is when we do the unit vector so we're gonna have, go ahead and compute something that is called the unit vector all right so unit vector is a very important characteristics of a vector um, property of the vector because this is how we tell the engineer, the architect, the whoever is going to build the system, what forces need to be accounted. So the magnitude is, in this 2D vector is 3.6, say newtons, because we're talking about force. Here's 4.1 newton, and this is 7.07 .07 newton. So um, we'll talk about unit vector in a minute, but before we move on, we have to go ahead and talk about Newton one more time. So a Newton is the unit of force. And if you remember, force is equal to a mass times an acceleration. So usually we use the international system of units where mass is in grams or kilograms, mostly in kilograms, where a thousand grams is one kilogram. And acceleration is in meters per second squared. So a Newton is one kilogram times one meter per second squared. This is units of Newtons, okay? Uh, mass times acceleration. All right, mass is the property of a system of a body and acceleration is, could be gravity or could be because it's moving, um, so on and so forth. So you have those, th those two things combined then you have a Newton. Okay, 
Now, when we talk about unit vector, what we have to do is go back to the components and say each component, I hope I have enough room, is going to be, um, it's going to be multiplied by its, or divided by its magnitude better. So in this case, you're going to, we have I, J, K, 3, 2, and 2, but we have a magnitude as well. So this was 3 squared, the magnitude was 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. This is 4, and 4, and this is 9. Okay, so what we have here is do the same thing, 3 and 2 and 2 divided by the magnitude. Okay, and the magnitude of this was square root of 17 or um, 4.12, whichever you want to do, because then you can do everything in the calculator at the end, or you can just do it step by step, whatever is easier for you. So this is the unit vector, okay? So if you do 3 divided by square root of 17, okay, so square root of 17 was 4.12. Let's do it again, 17 divided by, no, sorry, it's not that, is 17 and square root, okay, 4.123. So if you do 3 divided by 4.123 is 0 0.72. Okay. Let's see, I will have to have enough room. Yes, I do. So this is equal to, the unit vector is equal to 0 0.72 I go back to calculator and do 2 divided by 4.23123 0 0.48 0 0.48 J Y direction and in Z we have the same thing 0. 48k. So it's called the unit vector because notice that this is point, point, point. It's so called unit vector because notice that every number is less than one. So this is a good rule of thumb. If you're computing your unit vector and you're not getting numbers less than one, there's something wrong. And what this means is that the vector can be simplified x, y, z could be simplified as a vector with magnitude of, what was the magnitude? 4.123 and direction of 0 0.72, so direction of 0 0.272i, 0.48j, and 0.48z, okay? All right, and that is good to know because later on when you multiply the magnitude time e times each component, you're going to have the contribution of the force in each direction. So if this force was a cable holding a bridge, one of the cables holding a bridge, you can know in the x direction how much force is going to be applied to that beam and the y direction how much force is going to be applied to that column or whatever is holding it in the y direction and how much force is um, being contributed to that other column because this vector exists in space but you have to design structures that hold that vector in the space you know so the space is going to be x y and z so you have to know okay this force is going to have uh, 
newtons in total, but out of those 4.12 newtons, the, uh, is going to be a contribution in the x direction, in the y direction, in the z direction. So if you multiply 4.12, so that number times 4.12. 12, 3, we have 2. And 2. And 0 0.72 times 4.123 equals 2.96. Well, that would be a bunch of other numbers which is going to be close to three so if you put all the other decimal numbers we're going to go back to three i two j two k so in reality out of the 4.12 newtons three newtons are going to be applied to the in the x direction two newtons are going to be applied in the y direction and two newtons are going to be applied in the z direction so that is why we care about vectors, because even though the total amount of the force is 4.12, say, we want to see how much force is going to be distributed to each direction. So for instance, if a car, uh, the weight of a car is 3,000 pounds, we want to know how much force is distributed to each suspension or to each wheel. We have to start dividing if it's four wheels you have to divide by four and if there's extra weight you add to the car so we want the total force is good to know but we want to start knowing how much force is distributed to our systems and the car is an example how much force is distributed to each wheel but also in this case a vector is very useful because it tells us how much force is distributed to each dimension. Okay, so this is a 3D vector. 2D is the same, except for in this case it will be zero. So a 2D vector is going to be 3i 2j. It's going to be even simpler. But you can have r4 and r5. You can have multiple dimensions and in fluid mechanics and magnetism and a lot of physical. In real physical systems, you're going to have multiple dimensions. It's just that we can only see three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, or high depth and uh, width, so like a box, you know, you can only see some dimensions of a box, but that doesn't mean that you cannot characterize the box in more dimensions. Because, for instance, another way you can put as much information as you want in a vector, so let's say vector A is going to be characterized by information in I, J, K, and the third time, the third, uh, the fourth dimension is going to be time. So it's going to be any value in in I, any value for b for j any value for z and then some value in in time we, that what that means is that is moving from one point to the next okay that that force is moving from like an airplane is moving from one point to the next and there's a path that it took, and the smallest, the time, the instant, the closest, we'll be able to see what's the actual direction. So this is time one, and this is time two. Okay, so this path can be characterized with um, a time value in our vector. So this vector has four dimensions. One dimension accounts for time, and your three dimensions account for the space x, y, and z. Um, you probably know that you can have other types of representations. You can have polar, which is in terms of 
um, circles and angles. You can have spherical, which is in terms of um, angles and and um, di diameters or radiuses. Uh, you can have cylindrical, so you can have you can have many types of representations. The com the common ones are polar and Cartesian, but good for us in this class, we're gonna have no time. It's gonna be steady state or it's gonna be only space considerations. So the maximum we'll have is R3. We'll see some R2, two dimensions, and then we'll see some R3, three dimensions, no time. When you get to dynamics and fluid mechanics and other stuff, magnetism, you might get the chance to work with four dimensional vectors. If you get to fluid mechanics, you might even have to work with seven, eight dimensions when you have all the properties that go within the fluid for turbulence and other interesting aspects. But in this case, we'll only have R2 and R3. So this is a very quick representation of how vectors work. Remember that you can have different types of vectors, electric field, forces, velocities, magnetic um, forces, magnetic fields. But a vector is represented by two characteristics the magnitude and the direction. That is an important thing to remember. The direction is represented in a coordinate system and the magnitude is found with the square root of each element squared. So it's very simple, it's things that we already know how to do. Okay, so next we're gonna learn how to do manipulations with vectors how to add, subtract, multiply, do more advanced operations such as curl where you have to do some interesting manipulation of the numbers because you're developing the system in three dimensions or in two dimensions where they have to be rotated. But this is the basic knowledge that we have to understand.